issues. I know you've actually done that too. No, I had issues. You had issues, but you got it going. Ah. Uh, well, no, I did get one going. Yeah. I've got one that I haven't got going. I've got one of each. Oh, really? Yeah, I just never. I'm still running the old version. All right. So let me show you. This is the cool toy that I just got. Paul and I both have these now. This is a Zalman hard drive enclosure, two and a half inch laptop hard drive. You can also put an SSD drive in here if you want to. This is kind of cool. This can be mounted using the button on the side, can be mounted as an ISO. Think of bootable flash instead of burning a CD or making a flash. Put your hard drive in here create a folder on the hard drive called underscore ISO. Copy all of your ISOs to that folder, okay? Take it to the target computer. Plug this in into the computer, and before you plug this in into the drive, you push the little rocker switch in the up position. Plug it in. The screen on here lights up, and then says, shows you the first ISO in the directory. You then use the wheel to go up and down in the list until you pick the ISO you want, you then push in, and it selects it, it says OK, and then you tell the computer to boot from the flash drive that's connected, and it boots. Wow. What, what's it called? This is... <laughs> <laughs> Man. What's mine. It called? This like is, mine, mine, mine. That's a geek toy. This is from Zalman. The model number is Z as in Zebra, M as in Mary, dash, V as in Victor, E as in Echo, 200. You'll be surprised how cheap it is. M-A-N or M-L-N? You can post it. Z-A-L-M-A-N. Z-A-L-M-A-N. I actually have a link to the manufacturer's website. I will put post it out to the SIG list in a few minutes when I'm done. All right, so the other option when you plug it in is if you hold it down instead of up and plug it in, it becomes just a regular hard drive. So yeah. So I've been playing with this over the past week trying it out with different computers to see what works and what doesn't work. Uh, I've already filed a bug report with Hewlett Packard. Their smart start does not recognize this device, <laughs> and even as a flash drive, period, and when it's in ISO mode. So I've let them know about it, and because it's so inexpensive, one of my friends at HP is going to buy one and then take <coughs> it in and hand it to the guys that are writing the code for smart start and see if they can make it work. He, got, he loves this idea especially since he travels a lot and having to carry all the disks or all the bag of flash drives and which one has what on it, you know. Uh, he likes this idea. And so, Windows boots just fine from it? Yeah. I copied Windows 7 SP-164 onto it uh -huh. and booted my other computer just to see if it would work, and it does. So, yeah. And just put any old hard drive in here. I bought a, I got lucky, I, had an, I think it was a 320 gig, 7200, 700 RPM laptop drive for 60 bucks. You won't find that anymore. No. I just bought it two weeks ago. Wow. Two weeks ago. Yeah. I got lucky. So, brand new and hooked it up and fired it right up. Paul and I both have these now and I've got about 25 ISOs on here, including D-Band uh, and all kinds of other stuff, all kinds of other utilities. So if you're trying to clean a computer, uh, even uh, the uh, ISO you just gave us, I can take that DVD, flip it back to an ISO, put it on here, and make it bootable. So, because it's read only when you're in ISO mode. So, can you put information about that? On? I will. I will. Really cool. And it even comes with a cool little carrying case that you can put. The Does it have on. a belt clip? No belt clip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, just probably put one on, but you can put it in the package. Glue it, it's it's glue it on the Version two with the retractables, like full strength. Yeah. But it does come with a pocket protector. Don't use your pocket protector. Plugged into your switch. So what it, uh, that's you, the Sony. Is that what you put up there? Yeah, you're up. You're up next if you want to. And I'll, I'll post this information now, guys. Uh, it, well, Kevin was was talking. I, I hooked up my uh, media player. I just posted that. So. And I plugged it into his you want to plug it? Or you already did Okay. And as you can see right there, the top icon, Kevin's HP PC. That's actually the laptop. Above it though, I saw oh, it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the the oh, okay. Yeah. But let me let me uh, plug it back in. Because I saw it. Oh, there's, 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 there's the server. Yeah, there's the server. 
go to the server. There, there's, there's all kinds of cool stuff on there I threw out in the folders. There you go. And you'll see the normal. Yeah, this is DLNA compliance. That's yeah. what you're seeing. So go to videos. There's like there's a few in there. I didn't put very many. Anything good? Uh, just go to all videos. I don't think I categorize anything. Okay. Torchwood. Yeah. I just threw some small ones that aren't very big, just for testing. No, what are you on? With the hard drive shortage, I haven't put enough drives in here yet to move everything from my old home server view one. So that one is a, a, a web version, so it's kind of grainy. So if you go to the other one, it would be much better quality. So it's not the device that's I copied screen. three different files, a flash, an MKV, and I think, a, I think an ABI. So I wanted, because I figured we need something to test these devices with different file formats. Let me ask you, there's MPEG, AVI, and other AVI. Why are you pointing at the screen? I'm not, I'm pointing at my block right here. Okay. Yeah, there's a little That's block. I was just wondering, there seems to be... The, the, the one drawback from this box, too, is that it won't be the standard. Oh, uh, so it's going to downforce it. Yeah. And but this streams Netflix and Hulu Plus and everything. Yeah. How much is this, George? Fifty bucks. That's not bad for a fifty dollar device. Yeah. You know. <clears throat> this I wanted to put my mind up in HD. Sony Bravia, right? Yeah. Right. It's not internet here. And I was really surprised to find it at Micro Center too. <laughs> wow. The box didn't say anything about. Windows Home Server or anything else like, like that, except for it did say WMA platform and WMA. Yeah. And then it said DNLA. So I think there you go. Yeah, it's kind of worth it. Yeah. Windows Home Server, so I said, okay, I'll give it a try. Yeah. But that's what you're looking for for any of these devices is because of Windows 7 sharing capabilities and media streaming capabilities. Look for DLNA compliant. That's your standard you're looking for. First time I plugged it in, it did um, do an upgrade. Found it on Mac. It was really easy to do too. But you know, it's got oh, it's got the Amazon. So Amazon? If you, does that go right to your plus your Prime account? If you have one. I don't oh, know. that's cool. Yeah. That's, that's cool. cool. Like that's awesome. what I just the, 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 Yeah. <laughs> See, that's the thing. I, that's a, one of the downfalls of Media Center is that there isn't that. But the Xbox 360, they're talking about a. Amazon Snap and coming, so that gives you that gold best of both worlds with that device. Do what? Do these boxes start off the same? They yeah, the yeah, Roku and yeah. these guys, yeah. yeah. It's got Hoodoo, Netflix, a bunch of YouTube, YouTube. I mean, there's a, yeah. quite a few. So, Kevin, how would you say, how would this compare, compare to the Western Digital? So it's um, about the same thing. It's it? similar. Like, I've got that default to the weather. So when I turn the TV on, it shows me the week's weather mm -hmm. today plus the next five days. And then if I play a video or send the music to it, mm -hmm. it flips to that. And then when it's done, it flips back to the last app it was in, which was the weather. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of nice. Um, it's very simple. The remote is a lot smaller than that. It's, you know, about that big. Yeah. Uh, well, it doesn't have a lot of control. Stuff. So, yeah, that also went through three upgrades when I first hooked it up. So. Okay. Um, it's got different outputs. I, I just connected the HDMI up to to there, but it's got component output and yeah. composite video output. Yeah. Yeah. It's wireless too. I, I, I use the network cable here. But yeah. It's, it's got wireless cable. Here you go. How does the wireless stream all right? I haven't tried it yet. So apparently, Tina doesn't know I have this yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she didn't know. He's my neighbor, so you know. <laughs> Apparently the NHCIN class is not actually connected to the internet today. So, doesn't matter. Something is connected. Uh, I have internet. Yeah, it is. I got right, it. I'm doing a repair. <laughs> oh, there we go. We're good. It's also got digital output for sound. <clears throat> That's pretty cool. Optical. Optical, Optical yeah. Yeah, that, that has it too. Pop out the little thing. So, I was quite impressed with what I got from 50 bucks. Yeah, for 50 yeah. bucks. I mean, seriously. Yeah, if you got to wait, wait till after Christmas, Apple the price TV. of it, all this stuff's going to go down good. again. Like, I, like I said, I paid 65 for that, and now it's up at like 90, but it'll drop back down again. Well, in Windows 8 now, you know, it's, it's cool. supposed to have the you know play two and everything. Yes. You know, versus we kind of have to look for it now. It's a little bit buried, 
It's still supposed to be like very like just you know right there in your face. Now. I haven't tried it too. Just like imagine it was just yeah. in the lake. Yep. It should work. Should. Yeah. Yeah, because like my TVs are all like that, so I can do across the wire because because they're plugged into my network. If I didn't have the media centers on them, mm -hmm. it's cool because I could from my laptop sitting there throw my laptop up there, mm -hmm. which is kind of neat. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know, but I've been told it is that the, the interface is like PS3 or PS2 because it's Sony. You know. Sony. Yeah. So, I'm not a gamer. So that means your account's been hacked already. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, I don't know. So I just wanted to show that as a, as a another means for a media center without having to buy an Xbox and getting a new version that's quiet because there's mm. closer to the new version. Right. And it's got a USB port also where it's put up a USB drive and play whatever it's on the USB. So it sounds like it's identical to the Western Digital. I mean, yeah, I really don't see a problem or, or a uh, difference. Yeah. I didn't even know Sony had it. Because hmm. uh, I was looking at, also looking at getting you know, a, a Blu-ray player that has all this stuff in it. A lot of Blu-ray players do nowadays. Yeah. <coughs> you know, it's it's like like that. That. how much for a Blu-ray player. I didn't know how many Christmas. Saturday. Who's next? Are you done? I'm done. Who's next? Somebody, somebody else has got to have some toys. I got. I, I can show you the Prime. Okay. That's pretty cool, Nick. Nick, I wish Nick would have brought this. Nick actually has pictures on his phone. He built an AR-15. That's kind of a real geek toy. So, um, I wish he would have brought it in because I just think didn't it feel like we could bring it into school. <laughs> you know, just not the best idea. He should have brought it in. We're all big kids. I was gonna bring it. Nick said, "Don't." <laughs> There was nothing on the door that said, there was no, you can't carry concealed permit thing on the door. So, now, one of the things that I forgot about my phone that does, it's got the beam technology in it, and I have Google Plus, so I forgot I took these pictures today, and they were already in my Google Plus photos. So, it's kind of cool that you take a picture and it's already up in the cloud for me, so I don't have to sit there and do data transfers anymore. That's one of the nice things. I don't know if it's if you have to have Plus or not, exactly, or yeah. if it's just part of the. It's part of part of Plus. It's part of Google Plus, so just, it'll probably do it on the regular Android. I just yeah, turned it off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just turned it off of mine because I use Picasso a lot, and it, it just changed the whole access interface. I didn't like it. So. Yeah. So here is my Prime right here. It's this black device right here with the green lights on it. As you can see, it's a One U. Um, this right here is basically telling me that the, these are like the cable cards, kind of saying that they're active. And then over here, there's six lights, which is basically when the tuners are active. And so as it's changing channels or using recordings, it'll light up. So in this picture here, there's two some tuners in use. Two, yeah, two tuners are basically in use right now. Um, the cable cards mount in the back of it. So there's kind of a closer up shot of it. As you rotate behind it, I have a coax cable here, there's a coax cable here, one power cord, then there's basically a network cable, and then there's the two cable cards that are mounted here and here. Two Ethernet jacks and two yeah. cable cards. So you can see the Ethernet. So is the it's purpose gig. of the cable card is that to decode? The yeah, that's all the decoding. And is that something that's like a third party or you get from a cable you get supplier? From your cable supplier. Yeah, you get it from your cable supplier. Um, Either with all the new encrypted channels now, you either have to have one of their boxes mm -hmm. in your house, which I didn't want to have a with all the media center stuff that I have, I didn't want the Comcast box. Um, your other choice is to use cable card tuners like the TiVo. Some TVs you can plug them directly into. Um, some of the HD high end TVs do. I don't think a lot of them have that support anymore. Um, or you can start buying like the Seton tuner, which Seton has an internal tuner which is four tuners. Um, from what I understand, one cable card can actually support up to six tuners, um, but they, I guess it's not really good because of uh, processing yeah. kind of standpoint, so they kind of split them down. Um, so the scene you can put internally in a PC. One of the problems with it is that it's not really truly a network solution. You can kind of share the tuners, but it doesn't really, it works good, 
but when I having all the media centers that I have at my house and having the ability to like go to any PC because every Windows 7 machine has media center in it while I'm working on an upgrade I can actually tune in a channel on my second monitor because my tuner is sitting on the network so it's one of the nice things you just have to install the client so that's kind of a good shot of the back of it but yeah it's a you know, it does all the decryption for you of the channels the cable cards do. Yeah. So, the only downfall is you have to pay for the, I think you have to pay like five bucks per card per month. You know, they won't sell them to you. It's kind of like their boxes. You have yeah. to pay for the boxes. So either way, you're having to pay a fee. Yeah. I'd rather have this because then I can use my solution, which is True Media Center. So. You say a cable company charges you? Yeah. They charge you for renting the cable, cable cards. cards. You don't actually own them. Right. Just like you don't own the boxes. I pay two fifty per card per month. Now, if five you, bucks a month. Yeah, if you have the um, oh, what is the, like Comcast doesn't do this, but if some of the cable companies have the True Two Way, I think it is, that you have to get the tuning adapters then also. So in front of these, then you'd have this another device that does this tuning, so it can do the back and forth communication. But luckily, Comcast doesn't do that. I don't think your your cable provider does it. Do you so have, are they getting better at working with? Are they getting better working with stuff like this? I don't have any problems. The guy that the guy that, I, that came out to my house, he had never seen one of these. Are so you with Time Warner? Or? No, I'm with Insight, which Time Warner is buying. Mm -hmm. so no, they'll they'll trash that company. They will. So uh, it'll happen eventually. We'll see a huge spike in rates though in a year. But uh, what's going to happen? What happened was they brought them out. The guy goes, "I've never put these in anything but either a TV or one of our cable boxes." Right. right. That's, then that's what. And because normally they bring you the cable box, the cards are already in the back, and sometimes there's a door over it, and you don't even know it's there. But he's like, okay, here they are. So we took them downstairs and popped them in. And then I went upstairs, and I, and I already knew the IP addresses of both of the cards. So I went to the web page on my laptop, and we read the secure codes that he called in for to turn them on. Then we rebooted the unit, and then we were able to watch. That'll put that right in the media center. Yeah. Too, so you don't have to yeah. do it that way. We did it just because the guy was like, I don't know how to get yeah. to it. but it's. I'm like, okay, well, let me try this. Went to the web browser, got the IP, and there I was. That'd be the way to go. I've got uh, Time Warner, and I've got the Prime. Yeah. And I picked up the cable, the uh, cable card from the Time Warner store and took it back. And so you did a self-install. Self-install. Yeah. Which, which is now you can do. It yeah. was a nightmare. In that they wouldn't let me do self-install. One of two people in right. the uh, Western Hemisphere who we had experience right. who actually knew of the device. So maybe it flew up from Mexico. And what well, language did they speak? It no, no, it was, it was somebody in the U.S., but it was just a nightmare. But it took like 40 minutes of continually resending the activation bill <laughs> for it to finally sync up and go, got it. I didn't think it was going to happen. Yeah. Now, did you uh, have a few problems at first and the firmware has fixed your, your prime? I had firmware issues at first. I did that too. I mean, it was, I'm actually still running the beta from 1025 or whatever it is. Oh, oh wow. The yeah, the new one really. get that. Yeah. yeah. But, the 10.5 beta fixed my issue, which was the premium channels were telling me on my one PC that I didn't subscribe to that channel. So I called inside and yelled at them. They're like, no, everything's right. It must be your end. Yeah. Well, so I went on the, web, the, the HD or the, uh, Silicon Desk website and said, here's what's happening. They're like, get the latest firmware, put the beta on, problem went away. Okay. Also, the time order does require you do need to get the tuning adapter. Oh, okay, so Which you I have. I was thinking naively that it was like this small little Lugo speed dongle. No. No, it's a cigar box kind of. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, you're thinking it's like a little tuning fork, is what I keep thinking. I don't know why, but it's not. It's another It's, it's another device to put on your network, so, yeah. or in your cable. But it probably contains a little yeah. tuning fork. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> it's just inside Ding. the case. Yeah, it's not yeah. good case. <laughs> How many of you have ever saw the original hard drive for the TRS-80 Model 1? Did you ever open it up? It was hilarious. It was the size of what we would look at as a receiver today, a stereo receiver about yay tall, this big, you know. And you open it up, and in the corner, in one corner, is a full height five and a quarter inch hard drive. <laughs> that was like, I think it was a meg. You know, yeah, that was a meg. Back then. Yeah, that was and, like, wow. You, know, you could never fill that thing up. Yeah, back then you couldn't. But <laughs> it was, I, I, I used to work at Radio Shack once in college, and we got one of those. We are also a computer repair center up in Columbus. And we got one of those in, and I'm, I'm like, I'm going to see inside that. <laughs> and the guy's like, sure, come on back. And he popped it open and showed it to me. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. It's all air. So, so. 
Yeah, yeah those, those were huge. Yeah, it was designed to match all the other components. Uh -huh. So, well, yeah. we used to, when I worked Darwin, mm -hmm. you'd have, you know, a, a hundred thousand dollar router, yeah. right? Wow. And you pop this sucker open because you trashed it. I always love that. But you pop the sucker open, and inside this little, inside this big box of router is this little circuit board about this big. Yeah. And it's like, you know, you're paying a hundred thousand dollars. That's like, you know, fifty. Or, you know, like, it's like over five thousand per little solder. Circuit, solder, solder yeah, solder yeah. going on that thing. Yeah. It's like. All right, so um, somebody's making a killing off this. Sucker. Since I can't turn this on, I'm going to read you the back what it has built in. So I thought you were going to give it away. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with content. Uh, YouTube, Flickr, Pandora, uh, daily video podcast from CNN, NBC, uh, MTV, ESPN, and other online content. Full HD 1080p video playback and navigation. Uh, supports a wide range of file formats. Turn any USB drive into an HD media player. So you can copy anything onto a USB device and plug it in and it'll read it. Um, play media from any PC in your network, uh, HD uh, DLNA compliant. And it shows here all the media formats are on the side of the box. Uh, AVI, which is XVID, ABC, MPEG-124, WMB-9, BC-1. MPG, MPEG, Bob, MKB, which is H264, X264, AVC, and some of the ones I already read. TS, TP, M2T, uh, MP4, MOV, MPEG4, H264, M2TS, and WMB9. That's just the world video. That many it's a huge number. Yeah, it's too many. It is. It gets ridiculous. Yeah, and all the formats. It's like, come on, we just have one yeah. lossless format. <laughs> oh, it also supports playlists. So if you already have a playlist, you send it the playlist and it'll do it. Huh. Which is cool. It supports PLS, M3U, and WPL. And then subtitles, it supports that too if your content has subtitles. Not that that matters to us, but some other people that speak multiple languages may matter to them. So. So I got a question about this here. Or it makes sense to me that you could have this doing the tuning and then send the signal to any of your uh, computer right. devices, right? Right. Yeah. But how does it get onto the TV? How do you watch it on a TV? How do you watch a channel on a TV, for example? Well, um, basically because I'm using Media Center. Yeah. So when you turn on a TV at my house, uh -huh. there's a computer plugged into the TV like it is in the projector right now. So just think of the projector as a TV. Okay. So when you when you actually turn on a TV in my house, this is that's your interface. This is my interface. So this is the TV. So all you do is go to basically the guide or live TV, and you pull up the guide, and it, the guide actually pulls all the information. Okay. From the tuner. So you have to have a computer mm -hmm. hooked up to every TV in the house because I've I've got yeah. four TVs. Yeah. So because I I'm have using computer computer hooked up to this, like, no, no, no. Well, no. you can do it off of one. One of those. Yeah. yeah. The, the computer doing the recording yeah. needs to be a PC. PC, yeah. Right. But playback could be a Just playback and use one of those. Right. Now, if your okay. TV has that built in, which a lot of them do now, yeah. then you won't need that. Okay. But you, you mean they got TVs that are coming out with DLNA? Yeah. Most of them have a DLNA. They have okay. an Ethernet jack. Okay. All right. Yeah. Of, yeah. So then. A lot of Blu ray players. players. Yeah. Almost yeah. every device you buy right now has DNA support or okay. Play 2 or whatever Apple yeah, support. Microsoft calls it Play 2, but it's or the same as DNA. What is Apple's Play so Ready? Play Ready. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Play Ready on Apple. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then what about recording programs? Like you want to keep them in perpetuity, right? So how do you do that? Well, it, within Media Center, it just puts it dumps it all into a recorded TV folder. So. If you have a PC that's got like a two terabyte drive, mm -hmm. you know, you can actually let it record it and just store it. Okay. You know, you just add more drives if you need more space. Well, if you're going to play something to demonstrate the recorded, go back to the, the original thing, those kids. I, I want to see that last one. You know, I, I didn't hear it. You were laughing too much. <laughs> That was uh, Ron set that up on one of the PCs up front. It wasn't oh, Jason's machine. yeah, that was a that was a YouTube, that was a YouTube video. video. Yeah. I can show it, but I don't know what I have to find it. No, I mean the, within Media Center itself. Okay. You know, I have Windows Home Server. There's a snap in the Media Center, and so what Media Center will do is it'll record it. Mm -hmm. The moment it finishes, I have it set to copy up. So it copies it in like four minutes. It's usually about a four gig file. Okay. It'll put up dump it up to the home server. So 
in my case, since it's sitting up here in the home server, then anybody can basically get to that and right. see it. You can, with Windows 7, you could do a home group if you wanted to, if you didn't have a Windows home server, mm -hmm. and do the same concept. Okay. So you could actually let the media center itself store all the data, uh -huh. and then everything connect to it, and yeah. then get your recordings. The problem with recorded TV is, Usually after we watch it, we delete it mm -hmm. because I don't want, you know, 50 years of criminal minds stored or something like that. So is that. it automatically recording everything that comes in? No, it only records what you tell it. What it's like a DVR. It okay, all right. There, it functions no different than a DVR. So you can rewind, fast forward, yep. pause, yep. live TV and Skip. everything else with it. Yeah. Okay. So, so like, this isn't set up because I don't have a tuner, but it has live TV, you know, so you hit the live TV and it just starts playing the channel that was left on. Mm -hmm. um, guide, it's just like when you go into your guide into your regular DVR, because mm -hmm. all this is is a DVR with more. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and then you go into your guide and you start finding your channels. You want to record a channel, hit record it or record it. You okay. can set a schedule. Right. You Series can tell it, yeah. And everything else. Yeah, you, okay. can, you can customize the schedule to say record only new episodes yeah. or you were talking about um, catching back episodes of... Um, well, the deadliest catch. Yeah. You set it to record, it'll record everything. So it'll record old episodes and new, but if you just wanted to record new, you can adjust that. Okay. You also have the features with the movies. Netflix is built into this, so you can stream Netflix. Um, your music's here, so you can use it to play your music library. Um, on most of mine, I have a My Movies insert. So My Movie, my, my um, the default movie pizza in here doesn't work as well as some of the add-ins to Media Center. But it'll go through and throw all your album art in there, or cover art, which okay. because I'm using a, I've actually added these in here, but you know, this is my movie library, so I just rip everything to it, and now it's, you know, inside a media center. I don't have to go get the DVD. Mm -hmm. And you can store it on the home server if you want to do it that way, or like I said, you can store everything locally on the PC. Okay. So that's... That's so, a 10, so right now with the, view of media with the DVR that I have, I can record, you know, I can record programs and whatnot, but I can't save them anywhere else. I can't rip them to a DVD if I wanted to right. or, or do anything like that. Because you're using yeah. like, are you using like a TiVo or something? Just, it's the DVR from Insight. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because these are actually recorded onto a hard, basically into a computer system, into yeah. a format. They, they record into, um, oh, what's the, WRTV, it's like a custom... Uh, Microsoft um, file format, Okay. but any Windows 7 machine will play it. So right. you could pick it up and take it to another computer and play and what it. What if you want to rip it to a DVD? You can rip it to a DVD. So there's some, you'd have to have some kind of converter. Yeah. Actually, it's built into, it built into Media built Center. You can tell it, computer. take that recorded show, yeah. burn it to and that. Burn it to a DVD. Yeah, it's, built, it's actually built into the interface. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to leave Media Center to do it. Yeah. Okay. So it, basically what you do is you just you can get a computer and plug it into a TV. Okay. You can buy some really nice um, carbon, like low carbon PC makes these really nice small little boxes about like this that are Core i3s. You know that will do all this and they'll come with like terabyte hard drives. Mm -hmm. and they're like 800 bucks. They look nice. You can build your own custom box. It's when you get into the tuners that it starts to become the. It's where you start chopping all your money, you know, because. That the prime that I'm showing here, yeah. this unit is what five hundred bucks. Five hundred bucks. Yeah. You and, know. and it, believe me, it's worth it. Um, I started out with the original silicon dust uh, tuner, which was one cable coming in, yeah. two outputs yeah. over the network. We we all bought those. Yeah. They they were awesome, but they only did unencrypted shows, but in HD, which was basically only the local stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Insight was actually one of the best ones out there for a while. They didn't encrypt anything. And all of a sudden they went all digital yeah. and we lost everything. About a year yeah. ago Comcast did the same thing yeah. to us. You know, I had all those HD home runs, just a regular version. Yeah. And they were doing over the air stuff so they could do antenna if you had an HD antenna or they just do the regular stuff with the broadcast. And they worked great and then one day they clicked it over. Everything was encrypted except for, which they can't do by the law I believe is the local channels. Local HD. So now you're stuck that you have to move, if you're using Media Center, you had to move to the cable card solutions. At the time, the Seton card was the only card out there. Yeah. Um, I love silicon dust. I love the network-based tuning, you know, yeah, nice. for me. Because now I don't, have to, I don't have to run cable lines all through my house because I got Cat 6 everywhere. Hmm. You know, I put it in my rack, boom, you know, and I got all my PCs get it. It works great. Yeah. You know, there were some minor issues when it first came out. I mean, I had it like the day it shipped, you know, so, yeah. you know, within, a, within three.